Welcome, one and all, and happy Thursday, everybody. It's time for Scotch and Smoke Rings, our weekly adventure into all sorts of dark and horrible worlds. But before that, we have an hour-long Q&A. You've got questions. I've got answers. Good to have each and every one of you on the program today. They just released a three-gigabyte patch for Alone in the Dark. We started it last week. Uh, So if you missed my episode last week, you're going to want to watch that first. It's about an hour long. We basically go through the introduction and tutorial section for Alone in the Dark. And we're sort of diving into the main game now. So check that out first. If you haven't already, then come on back for part two. But before we get into that, we've got the Q&A. We are live on Facebook, Twitch, Kick, and YouTube today. Good to see everyone on uh, Facebook today, Chris Minto, Stephen Williams, Toby Noble. Good to see everyone on kick. Christina Sierra. She says, uh, I tagged you in a hilarious post on Twitter. Thank you, Christina. I'll ch- definitely check that out after the broadcast. We are live on Twitch as well. The Elder Irish. Good to see you. Mainzer, Florida Bigfoot, Mr. Loverman. And of course, it's great to see all of the regulars and the members and the Patreon supporters on YouTube today. Chinninator, Alt Grendel, Changed One, The Magic Q, Brandon Belt Fed, Nick Barnhouse, Julian Z, Laura L. Stodd, Grant Haber, Cordelia, Vince M. Arcade, Craig Euler, Ant444, and it's Adrian Parker today with the first Super Chat of the Day. He says, hey, Ox, been a while. Hope you're doing well, Adrian Parker. I'm doing very well. Good to have you here. Adrian's been a member for 48 months. Thank you so much, Adrian. Aviro says, so happy to catch the stream tonight, Ox. I've got my drinks ready. A wonderful hello to my Crimson Clover. Crimson and Clover? Over and over. Thank you very much, Aviro. We are all laden up with drinks. We've got our scotch Ah, always a welcome addition. And of course, our rum. Great. Wait, uh, wait, wet the whistle. And the cigar. It wouldn't be scotch and smoke rings without a cigar. Joey says, no music. Klaus says, where's the music? Did I? Oh, it's okay. Hold on. I forgot to turn it on. Well, I had it turned on, but I forgot to turn the sound on so that you could hear it on my broadcasting software. Let me know if I need to turn that up. I think I need to turn that up. There you go. Should be loud enough for you all. Let me know if it isn't. Christina Sierra says you should uh, move the creepy baby next to the ox plush. Uh, Christina says that on kick. Uh, well, what creepy baby? By the ox plush? I mean, there's the ox plush. I don't see a creepy baby near to it. Are you saying I should have one there? No, the entire point is that there is no creepy baby. And those of you who insist there is are hallucinating. You're tripping on something mad. It's, it's a mad trip. On something bad that's also mad. It has nothing to do with me. So you can stop pretending that there's a creepy baby somewhere in this office. There isn't. And I'd like you all to agree. Kara Aerosmith says, Hey, Ox, been uh, down lately. Lost my job due to budget cuts. So I've been rewatching your Bioshock lives since I'm caught up on Fallout 4. Happy stream. Thank you, Kara Aerosmith. Sorry to hear about the uh, the job loss. It's so rough out there for so many people right now. I, I can't tell you how many people in my real life are also going through something similar. And it's hard to get a new job, too. People who are searching for jobs at months for months at a time. So it's, it's rough, and I'm sorry to hear that. I wish you the best. I'm glad you're coming by to watch the videos. But I hope you're able to find something new soon. Doghouse75 says, hey, Ox, glad I can catch you tonight. Thank you so much, Doghouse75. Glad you're here as well. Sparrow says, Ox, your office is very messy. I know. 
I, I realize that, and I know you guys keep bringing it up. I need, I need to, I, it's my fault, really. It's, it's on me. I need to take some time. I was going to do that last weekend, but then I got cut up with something else. But, but you're right. My office is very messy. I've got papers stacked over there and hats and boxes from the computer build. I still have boxes lying over there from, it's, it's been a whirlwind, but I keep saying that as an excuse. So I gotta, I gotta stop making excuses and just clean my office. I will clean it. One of these days, soon. Michael Seacrest says, Beer is the drink of choice tonight, but a 33 degrees is a, a, a cigar is not in my future. But a 33 degrees, a cigar is not in my future. Are you saying that there's a cigar named 33 degrees? Or are you saying at 33 degrees, smoking a cigar is not in, in your future because it's really cold? Either way, I hope you're able to enjoy the evening, Michael Seacrest. Ant444 on uh, Twitch says, yes, we all agree there is a creepy baby. We do not all agree. That's the point. I disagree. There is no creepy baby. You guys can come and agree all you want, but there is no creepy baby in my office, and I don't, I don't know where this rumor, this persistent rumor comes from. Rum Monogold on Facebook says, hello, Oxhorn and all in chat. Good to see you, Rum Monogold. Rue Rorin on Twitch says, Happy Partner Anniversary. Thanks for the streams, Ox. They always put me in a better mood. You are welcome, Rue Rorin. Happy Partner Anniversary to you, too. Rue Rorin says, I see no creepy baby. I see the little Ox buddy. I hope to get someday, though. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly right. There is no creepy baby. There is just the little Ox buddy who's alone in this office. There are no other plushes. So, yeah, you're seeing things accurately is what I think. Deuteronomist says, have you decided how many vids you'll do per episode of Fallout? I was thinking one review vid and one game references vid for people new to Fallout, but you tell me slash us. I mean, you're actually right on point. That's great. Like <laughs> two per episode, one of a review and one uh, pointing out all of the, uh, the game references is a great idea. And it's something I was thinking about. I'm not committing to anything because I've learned you know, if there's one thing I've learned about, you know, business on YouTube is never promise the viewers anything. Because if you can't fulfill it, they will hold it over your head for years. Years. It took me how long to finally get the uh, Fallout New Vegas How to Play Caravan video? I promised that one once on stream. And you guys kept mentioning it for years until I finally sat down and did it. So lesson learned. I'm not making any promises. But I think you've got a good idea there, Deuteronomus. Northern Berserker says, after watching for eight years, I see you've come so far. I remember you hesitating playing Witcher because of magic. <laughs> and now you're flying through Baldur's Gate. Yeah, so uh, it's, not be it's, uh, he's, it's not because I was like offended by magic. It's, beca it's because I didn't want to play a swords and sorcerer game as I felt at the time that they were all too derivative of Tolkien. And I love Tolkien, and I love the Tolkien universe, and I think that, you know, he pretty much laid the groundation for fantasy as a genre, and that everything after Tolkien has just been derivative and hasn't added much to the space. I realize now that that a, was a bit of an uneducated view, having been exposed to a lot of fantasy games um, uh, I, I, I can recognize that there is a lot of innovation in new fantasy storytelling um, that adds to what uh, the groundwork that Tolkien laid. Uh, yeah, so I enjoyed The Witcher, and but that wasn't 80 years ago. That was, what, five or six? Five? Five years ago? That wasn't that long. I mean, yeah, it's half a decade. Okay. It was a while ago. It was a while ago. But yeah, Baldur's Gate, having a great time. Witcher had a wonderful time. Greg Williams says, by law, you're supposed to turn your headlights on in the rain due to a court ruling in Sweden. And he spelled that with two E's. Sweden. But how do I know when it's raining? Raining in Sweden. He did it again. Two E's in Sweden. Also, how can Piper just keep ditching her sister? Okay, I realized it was a joke, well, because we don't have to follow Swedish laws here unless we're in Sweden, but I get it, I get it. Uh, that said, uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Who's watching Nat? He's, she's supposed to be in charge of her sister. I guess what we're supposed to get from this is that it is a post-apocalypse and children grow up fast in a post-apocalypse with parents dying all over the place and, you know, wars and famine and disease and pestilence. 
children have to grow up fast in order to take care of themselves. And perhaps Nat is at an age where she can take care of herself. Though, yeah, you'd think she'd stay home and take care of Nat instead of going off on an adventure with the sole survivor. Alt Grendel says, I was fired from my last job because I kept asking uh, customers smoking or non-smoking. Apparently the correct terms are cremation or burial because you worked in a funeral parlor. And, oh, that's, that's a dark. Alt Grendel, uh, a bit dark. Thank you for that. Man of Warb says, most challenging enemy you've ever faced in a Fallout game? Hmm. Um, that's a tough one. Uh, it's a tough one because some of the enemies I just talked my way past. Like the Master, for example. I didn't have to fight him in my gameplay because I just passed a bunch of dialogue checks and until he self-destructed, essentially. Uh, same with the Calculator in um, Fallout Tactics. So... I don't know. I, I guess the toughest ones were the ones I just chose not to fight. I opted out of the battle by passing a charisma check. Main 11 says, I am sorry if this was already answered, but will you play the new storyline in Fallout 76? Maybe, maybe not. It's not a high priority right now um, because I've got so many other games that I'm playing and a lot of other content to get through. What with the new Fallout show getting ready to release next month. Uh, and also, I am I feel burned with Fallout 76 in particular. I th There is so much about the game that I have loved and that I have created content about. Uh, but, uh, you know, ever since Steel Rain and Dawn, I keep coming back with every little update an event that they add and I try to play it and I'm trying to get into it and it's just not catching me it's not grabbing me I, I, I realized that there's now new story with Atlantic City but when I tried to do the Atlantic City um, expedition last time there was it was so thin there just wasn't anything there and I just I feel like I wasted my time it was frustrating there were bits and pieces that I enjoyed but overall it wasn't a fun experience for me. Um, now that said, you know, the, it, it has more story now. And perhaps I should take some time to explore that story and see if it's worth it. But expeditions in, um, in all have been rather disappointing to me. Jessica McDonald on Facebook says, Hey Ox, so I have a lot more free time on my hands. I quit writing after 27 years. Well, Jessica, I hope you quit for good reasons, for positive reasons. Uh, sorry to hear that you're quitting writing, but uh, it, I'm it sounds like you're retiring, uh, which is great. Well, well, I hope you find something to fill your time with that's meaningful to you and that you thoroughly enjoy. Zombie Muffin 30 says, happy partner anniversary. Thank you, Zombie Muffin on Twitch. Chocolate Chip Wookie on Twitch says, Howdy, Ox and friends. Happy Scotch and Smoke Rings. Thank you, my friend. It's hard for me to read some of the Twitch usernames because it's dark purple on a dark blue background for me. Finsley says, To be honest, the 76 DLCs feel like mediocre mods. Maps just don't look good. I mean, there, there are, there's definitely a lot of criticism for the new content that is released for Fallout 76. Okay, um, Marine98 says, Howdy Oxen chat, cleaning party at Ox's house next Scotch and Smoke Rings. It's not dirty, it's just disorganized. Like, I've got, it's not, fil I just need to put the papers away and get the recycling out and, you know, it's, it's not filthy. It's not like I have rats scurrying around and cockroaches or anything. I just got a little clutter. It's a little clutter, that's all. Uh, Clueless and Callie says, Hope, Hoping we get a smoke ship for my dog, who passed yesterday. His name was Chewbacca, so maybe a Millennium Falcon going over the Rainbow Bridge. How can I say no to that? Clueless and Callie. Absolutely. Let's do a smoke ship in honor of Chewbacca.
All right, I got to get my cheek muscles ready here because this is going to take some artistic skill. A Millennium Falcon flying over the Rainbow Bridge to Valhalla. It's going to take some creative effort. Let's see. And there we go. I think I got it. Here we are. All right, don't blink. You're going to miss it. Oh my gosh, I surprised even myself at my own ingenuity there. That was the Millennium Falcon of, of all ships flying over the Rainbow Bridge. And did you see the detail on there? Every little satellite dish, every little boxy nook. I mean, it kind of looks like a round cookie, but it was, you know, lumpy with the little nooks and crevices that made it spacey looking. And man, it's just, and the Rainbow Bridge, did you see all those colors? That's right colors that I painted in my smoke? I mean, who else can do that? Who else can do colors? No one, I say, just me. You're welcome, Clueless and Callie. Rest in peace to Chewbacca. Thank you so much for coming by. Murdin Philippe says, don't know if you've heard or not, but the Easter Bunny has been um, having a hard time and went to a therapist. He had an existential crisis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. More Easter jokes, please. I like that one. That was good. More Easter jokes. Existential crisis. Rachel says, uh, I'm saying this with love as someone with ADHD, but do you have ADHD? <laughs> if I do, it's been undiagnosed. <laughs> Okay, you know it's bad when your viewers are, are medically diagnosing you. <laughs> I'll clean up my office, okay? I will. I'll clean it up. Just give me time. I realize I've been saying that for months now and that you've given me time. But give me more time. I need more time. I will clean my office. The rest of my house is not like this, by the way. The rest of my house is pristine. But my mind is a spider's web of... of stuff. And my office is a reflection of my mind. I've got a lot of things that I'm working on. But I will clean it all up. Eventually, it, it's going to come. Thank you, Rachel. Julian Z says, uh, Hi, Ox. Good to see you on the Scotch and Smoke Rings. Hope you're well. I'm getting excited more for the Fallout TV show. Did you know some people think grass won't be wet in the morning? But it do. Okay. Just... All right. I'll, I'll give you the... All right. Let it do. And thank you, Julian Z, for that. Uh, I also am getting excited for the Fallout TV show. Blue Thunder 29 says, Greetings, Ox. Today it's my 30th birthday. I know your side is still the 28th, but mine is the 29th of March. Yeah, I'm still on the 28th for the next couple of hours, but congratulations to you to you for your 30th birthday. 30 years on one planet revolving this fine sun. That's amazing. What an achievement, Blue Thunder. Congrats to you. I hope for 60 more. Is that even possible? Yes, it's possible. 60 more. Aurora says, Happy Oxiversary to me, Rubber Nipples. Rubber nipples, everyone. Well, we now know your hobby, Urarurur, and that's fine. I'm not going to shame it. Everyone's got to have a hobby. Everyone has to have an interest. And now we know yours. And that's okay. More power to you. Nuka Tom says, howdy, oxen chat. Sorry I missed last week, but I partied a bit too hard. I got a promotion at work last week, so I'll choose today to truly celebrate. Thank you, Nuka Tom. Congratulations uh, on your promotion, my friend. Sorry you missed last week, but I'm glad you enjoyed your party. And there's a lot to watch today. Northern Berserker says, as a Brotherhood Sentinel, I enjoy convincing farmers to contribute to the good cause. Wink, wink. 
Nudge, nudge. Say no more. Northern Berserker. That is something that the uh, Brotherhood of Steel does. That's for sure. Robert Sierma or Sierzma says, like others, I'd love to see some form of um, MST3K style reaction vids. That said, since it will be released all at once, I don't want you to get spoilers. I, I plan to binge the first few days to avoid them. Mystery Science Theater 3000. Yeah, um, you know, the thing is, have you ever noticed that they all, they were always reviewing really old movies? Like old sci-fi movies, old horror movies. There were never new releases. And the reason, of course, for that is copyright, right? <laughs> they weren't going to be releasing brand new TV, or uh, reviewing brand new TV shows or reacting to brand new movies for copyright reasons. Which is my problem. It's I, I realize other YouTubers do this, but I'm hesitant to do a record a live reaction to a series that has just released um, for copyright reasons. But I will definitely produce content. There will be a lot that I have to say about it, and I hope you all enjoy it. Greg Williams says, Sorry, I thought Sweden was spelled with two E's. My mistake. Also, do you have a favorite classic TV show? I'm a Danny Thomas fan here. No worries, Greg. I mean, it is pronounced Sweden, so I suppose it's only logical that it's, if you're an English speaker, uh, spelled with two E's. Uh, but no, it's uh, Sweden. It doesn't, it's Sweden. That's how you spell it, Sweden. Yeah, it doesn't sound good. Ooh, now that I hear it. That's how it's spelled. Not Sweden. Okay. Uh, well, I'm glad you're a Danny Thomas fan. Uh, a favorite classic TV show. I'm in Columbo. <laughs> is it any? Is it a surprise to anyone? I love Columbo. I absolutely love Columbo. Um, I love uh, Hercule, Hercule Poirot on the BBC. Uh, I mean, that's the kind of stuff I watch. <laughs> so, yeah. It's got to be Columbo. Danny Oakley, 15, says, uh, Hey, Ox, I found Fallout Brotherhood of Steel for the PS2 today, and so far it's been fun to play, despite a lack of lore. Any thoughts on it? You know what? Anything I were to say about Brotherhood of Steel for the PS2 would be unfair, because I haven't played it. And you really can't criticize something unless you've actually played it. That said, I have read a lot about it, and from everything that I've read, it, it doesn't sound like a canonical work. And that's the problem with it. It might be fun to play. The gameplay design might be fun, but when you're making a game, you have to go beyond a gameplay. You, you might have a great gameplay loop, but if you want to make a classic game, and if you want it to work integrated in a franchise, if you don't want it to just be a game you decided to make and you're slapping a brand name on it, like Fallout, then you've got to adhere to the established lore of the universe, which is something they didn't do. So, yeah, maybe I'll take, take a look at it. I am running low on Fallout uh, games to cover, as I've covered nearly everything. But uh, who knows? Who knows? Maybe I'll tackle it. Julian Z says, I went to the zoo yesterday and saw a piece of toast in a cage. When I asked the zookeeper why, he said it was bred in ca captivity. And I almost butchered that because I was smiling. A piece of toast in a cage it was bred in captivity. Right. Robert. Cheers, Ox, he says. Cheers to you, Julian Z. Thank you for that. I shouldn't smile. It's not funny. Joe Googe says, uh, Hello, Ox. I hope your day's been going well. What happened to the Friday time slot? I haven't been here for a while. Also, Forbidden West is great. Start slow. Um, I don't really have time for as many live streams as I would like. I need time to work on my lore videos and my shorts now that I'm doing shorts. Uh, I mean, I've got an editor who works on some shorts, but this week I've been experimenting with working on my own shorts. So I've got a lot that I'm doing, and uh, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about finding time to maintain the live streaming schedule that I currently have. So it's one of those things where I'm only one guy, and I'm trying to do a lot, and it might be too much, but uh, I'll try to figure out a way to keep everything going as long as I can. <laughs> Uh, Marie98 says, what do you call an unconventional Easter egg? Eggcentric. 
Because it's it's an unconventional Easter egg. It's eccentric. Egg-centric. All right, that was all right. Okay, that, thank you. We'll, we'll add it to the, to the uh, catalog of uh, Easter-themed dad jokes. Thank you. Lawrence Corner says, just wondering, did we ever get an ox body pillow? Uh, why are you saying we? Why are you bringing us into this? This is all on you. You want a body pillow, and you want it to be oxhorn-themed, apparently. That's, that's on you. You can go find someone willing to make you such an atrocity, and you can pay for it and have it shipped to you. That's your thing. There's no we here. Don't make this a plural when it's clearly a singular. Okay? Just just putting that out there now, Lawrence Corner. Let me know if you get one, but, you, you know, I, I don't, otherwise don't want to be involved. Joseph Widmer says, Hey, Ox, been watching your Last of Us playthrough and have been enjoying it. Thank you, Joseph Widmer. I thoroughly enjoyed The Last of Us. What a great game that was. And the show was also great. Watched every single episode. Timberjack says, Do Wastelanders die at Deathclaw Eggs for Easter? And he spelled it D-I-E instead of D-Y-E because Deathclaws are dangerous. Do they die at Deathclaw Eggs? Um... Yeah, I assume they would. I assume they cr crack every Deathclaw egg they can possibly find. Man of Warp says, Have you heard of the salesman who decided to sell annuity policies based on the vehicle's powertrain mileage? He displayed ingenuity. <sighs> this is less of, less of a, a an Easter... Dad joke session and more of an engine dad joke se session. How can we, how can we do puns on the on the word ingenuity, ingenuity, ingenuity? Wow, that's very specific. Annuity policies based on a vehicle's powertrain mileage. That must be something they uh, uh, a joke that they tell back at the shop. Robert Sears uh, Sema Sears Sema says. Are there stats on what devices people use? TV here. Uh, yeah, I haven't looked at them recently, but yeah, after a broadcast, you can go into YouTube analytics and see the devices that people watch your show on. TV is not very big. Most people watch, I think, from mobile devices uh, and, and PCs. But uh, yeah, TVs, TVs are there. I'm glad it looks good on a TV. Rachel says, so did you get new Easter baskets? Also, your answer was the most ADHD answer to, do you have ADHD? I, what, it, I, I don't, okay, I'll take your word for it. I don't know these things. I don't know what the symptoms of ADHD are. So uh, I'll, I'll see to your superior judgment there on whether or not I have ADHD. But the answer is yes, I did get Easter baskets for the kids and... The dogs did not get into them, so Easter is going to be a go. It's going to be a, a positive day. They will have chocolate. No popcorn and no fruit. Chocolate. The way Easter should be. Random Gray Main says, Ox works on a pair of shorts. Film at 11. Oh, okay. In a pair of shorts or on? Because the mental image is very different. If I'm working in a pair of shorts, then I'm showing off. If I'm working on a pair of shorts, then I'm a tailor. Which is more scandalous? I don't know. They're both kind of scandalous. They both draw headlines. But you got to get that in or on. Because if it's on, then I'm just a tailor. Julian Z says, I accidentally dropped a bucket of paint on my boss at the job site. Boy, was he blue in the face. It's, it doesn't deserve it. That's the thing. It's so bad it doesn't deserve the laughter that I'm giving it, which is why I'm mad at myself for smiling because it's not that funny. I can't even drink. Wow. Blue in the face. Wandering Paladin says, I love the railroad epilogues. Can't wait for the next one. Thank you, Wandering Paladin. 
I am hard at work, working on my next faction story. But as I said at the end of my railroad epilogue video, it's going to take some time to get all the footage sorted because I have to capture all the footage for the entire series before I start to produce it. And that takes a really long time. Also, I'm working on more content related to the Fallout show uh, that I hope to get out, you know, in due time. And that's that's eating into my production schedule. You see how I'm finding it difficult to maintain my streaming schedule as well. So bear with me. It will resume. I'm just not sure when, but it will resume. Chitinator says, Hey Ox, tonight I'm drinking Sailor Jerry's rum with Coke. What are you drinking tonight? Also, I'm re-watching your Horizon Zero Dawn playthrough. Thanks, Chitinator. I had a great time with Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, as for what I'm drinking tonight, this is Kraken uh, Spiced Rum with Coke. And this is Glen Fittick. Is it Glen Fittick? Or Glen Livet? I think it's Glen Livet. This is Glen Livet 14 years, I think. War Moose Eternal on Twitch says, How do you organize a party for astronauts? You plan it. Plan it. As in the, the astrological body. Astronomical. Did I say astrological? God. Thank you, War Moose. Twilight Phoenix Fox says, What's up, you handsome devil? And sexy chat. Well, wow, you're in the right place, as my, my viewers do tend to be a bit horny. Um, not, not judging, but it's, just, it's the nature. It's the nature of people. So you're in the right place. Um, I take your compliment, and I internalize it. Thank you for that. <clears throat> ben Bex says, uh, What if you did a watch party of the Fallout show where you have a shot of you and a timer in the corner to show where the episode, where in the episode you are? This way you're not showing it, but we can watch with you. Yes, Ben, that is definitely a solution to that particular copyright problem. And it's an elegant one, which has been recommended to me in the past, and I appreciate it. But I also explored yesterday my thoughts on my creative process and how um, when I'm watching something, I get my, my brain starts writing my response video. And once it starts getting out of my head, I forget about it. And I don't want that to happen. So for my creative process, I kind of need solitude to watch something, react to it, write something, produce content on it. It's a very solitary. I, I kind of need that because if, if, I, if I have too many distractions, it's hard for me to express my reaction and to be creative that way. Um, so again, I'm not ruling out the possibility of having some sort of live reaction to the show, but I also don't want that to come at the expense of my actual narrated reaction and dissection videos. So really, I guess I'm, what I'm saying is that I won't know what I'm going to do until the show drops, until I've seen a couple episodes and I know what I'm getting into. I mean, it's all going to drop at the same time, right? So I'm probably just going to sit there and binge watch it all and then start producing content. Yeah, I don't know. I got a lot of thinking to do on that. Northern Ber Berserker says, So will my brothers in power armor be covered in your next faction series? I'm not telling you which faction I'm going to be working on next. It's either going to be the Brotherhood or the Minutemen, obviously, because they're the two ones left. And uh, you'll find out when I get there, I suppose. Nuka Tom says, why is Peter Cottontail so tired when Easter in April? Why is Peter Cottontail so tired when Easter is in April? Because he had a long march. All right. Well, that's all right. Do, do rabbits march? They sort of hop, right? Okay. I can imagine a rabbit marching. So, therefore, the joke works. The Cat Farm says, Hey, Oxhorn, first time watcher with my dad. Hello there, the Cat Fam. I said Cat Farm, didn't I? Well, that's a completely different uh, uh, mental image. Um, well, glad to have you on the program. Hello there, the Cat Fam's dad. Glad to have you all here today. Thank you so much for watching. 
Union Pacific Gaming says, You are out of uniform, soldier! Where is your power armor? You know what has always bothered me about that? Is... <coughs> power armor isn't a uniform. It's armor. You wear armor to go out into combat. You don't wear armor to prance around Navarro, you know, doing your barracks duties. It's not a uniform. Anyway, everyone loves Dornan. Gomer216 on Twitch says, Hey, Oxhorn, how does Moses make his tea? He brews it. He brews it. Hebrews? Yeah. That's a biblical joke there. A joke of biblical proportions. Huh? See, he brews it. Uh, thank you, Gomer216. Stephen Gibbs says, uh, Why do rabbits only walk on hot coals one day a year? Because hot cross bunny are only for Easter. I don't get it. Hot cross bunny? Walk on coals? Is that like a regional joke? Because... <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> What's a hot cross bunny? I don't... What, is it like a food? I don't know. Well, you'll have to explain that to me, Stephen Gibbs. Julian Z says, I was going to uh, propose to my girlfriend, but my dog ate the ring. Now it's a diamond in the rough. <laughs> Cheers again, Oxhorn. <laughs> uh, you ate the ring, it's a diamond in the rough. That's great. Thank you for that one, Julian Z. Uh, Man of Warp says, uh, yeah, astrological predictions aren't exactly logical, are they? They, they, they are not exactly logical, no. So, uh, Tiffany Sailing with a very generous super chat says, here's a recipe for zero crack. Was it like a, a drug with zero calories? Like, is cocaine going to your hips? Here's crack zero. No? Okay, hold on. Let me finish this. Here's the recipe for zero crack. One and a half shots of crack and spice drum. Oh, I see where... Okay, crack for cracking. One and a half shots of crack and spice drum. And the rest, Coke Zero. Try the vanilla flavor. It gives it a nice aftertaste. On the rocks or straight up. Stay well, my friend. Tiffany, thank you. That zero crack went in a better direction than I was imagining. I'll have to try it out. Marine 98 says, uh, which crack and rum do you get? The light or the dark? I've tried the light with Dr. Pepper. Oh, I get the dark every time. Um, I'm not a big, you know, light rum is all right, but I think a dark spice rum. That's the best kind of rum. The Sims Fangirl says, Happy Partner Anniversary. Thank you very much, The Sims pan, uh, Fangirl on Twitch. Uh, Retro Pro Frank on Twitch says, Hey, Mr. Oxor, I'm a big fan here. Keep up the great work, but I did have a question. Are you going to jump into the Fallout 76 American Playground DLC? There's a pretty good quest line that centers around the Devil's Blood, a family that moved from Atlantic City to Appalachia. Addiction family, really great quest line. Will you be playing this and maybe uploading a lore video? I don't know. Maybe. Um, like I said, uh, I'm pretty burned on the expeditions, but I have heard that the latest one is very different with a lot of lore. So maybe I'll give it a chance. We'll see. Saul Goodman on Twitch says, Hey, Ox, my dad introduced me to you five or six years ago. Hey, good on your dad. Uh, hope things are well there. And I'm glad you're still watching. Uh, Marine 98 says, you also have the Raider faction from Nuka World? Okay, I forgot. What was that in response to? 
Um, was that in response to something I said earlier? Raider faction in Nuka World? I don't know. There is a Raider faction in Nuka World. Lawrence Coroner says, <clears throat> How did my Easter egg vanish? My boyfriend ate it. P.S. Whiskey, my country's greatest international tax asset. Enjoy Slange Mahaf. There's a lot there that I don't understand, but thank you, Lawrence Coroner. Thank you so much. I don't know what Slange Mahath means, but I do like whiskey. So there is that. Von Rick says, will you finally be able to reveal your involvement in the TV series when it launches on April 11th? As I have repeatedly said, Von Rick, and of course you know this, you're just wanting to get me in trouble, which is why you said this, but I will have to say it again now. I am not involved in the Fallout TV show. I have never been involved in the Fallout TV show. Yes, they invited me to go see the Philly event in Austin, but that's that's it. And I've been I've created content about that. I'm not involved in the production of the show at all. They didn't hire me for anything. I don't play a voice. I don't play a character. Nothing. All right. Just making that very clear. I am not involved. Von Rack. Jessica Kindred says, does February March? No, but April, May. The calendar joke. We love calendar jokes. Oh, so good. I love, I love, I love my calendar girl. Thank you, Jessica. Ranker1138 says, last chance to get that med kit, Ox. <laughs> I'm about to buy it and make a better prop with blackjack and bookers. A, a Futurama reference there. All right. All right, see if I can find it. Do I have it saved in a tab? Yep. Still there. I'm going to buy it now. Ah, want me to sign in? I don't remember. What was my, what was my eBay name? Is that it? Oh. Uh, please click each image containing a plant. Oh, they only chose sunflowers and cameras. I mean, the difference between a sunflower and a camera. Oh, the lens. Okay. I can see how a robot would get confused about that. Still. Password? What? Oh, man. Nope. Um, do I have it saved somewhere? Surely I've got it saved, right? Yeah, but it's the one. Oh. That's a really, no wonder. Why did I, oh, that was back in my phase when I was like. Generating 25 character passwords. Hey, that was it. Oh, you're going to text me now? Fine. See, this is what you're making me go through. Live on camera, because you want me to buy it now. <sighs> Hold on a second. Almost done. Almost done. It's doing payment. Last one. Almost. Yes, complete purchase. And drum roll. There we go. Okay, I got it, and it's on the way. Check it out, Ranker. If you go back to that eBay listing, it'll be gone now because I just bought it. I will show it off on camera. It's the perfect first aid kit. Thank you for finding it for me. 
Man of Warb says, uh, just realized that the girl group Us Cracks from Cyberpunk is a play on a part of the anatomy. Is it? Why? Because everybody has cracks. Not just girls in a group. I don't... I mean, I could come out with a band called Us Elbows. But that wouldn't be very clever. Is that really what they're named after? Us Cracks? We've all got cracks. All right. Blue Thunder 29 says, I just see your short clip about dog eating chocolate and you say the dog vomit uncontrollable. Is it really true or did you make that up? I promise you it's really true. It's, I didn't make it up. Though I can see how you, no, he, he, he vomited his, it was the most vomit I've ever seen come out of any creature. And it was just liquid. My other dog, Admiral, he vomited up a somewhat solid pile of chocolate vomit. But Grits, it was just liquid, blah, blah, liquid chocolate vomit. It was like a garden hose. <laughs> Those poor people <coughs> had to clean up that huge mess. Colonel 87 says, hi, Ox, the house always wins. The house always wins until the courier gets involved, at least. Jonathan H. says, I feel like a good 90% of the Ox community is made up of my fellow dads out there that enjoy laughing at bad dad jokes, lol. How's it going, Ox? So, I don't know. I mean, they call it a dad joke, not because um, dads enjoy it, but because they're the kind of d jokes that dads tell. That is to say that dads aren't afraid of just looking ridiculous when they tell jokes, which is why they tend to be really bad, but also sometimes kind of clever jokes. But everyone loves listening to dad jokes. It's going very well, Jonathan H. David Garanson says, just showed up. Did you let everyone know when the ox body pillow with the tassel option is going on sale? Hello, kitty power armor for all. I oh, know it's hello, kitty power armor for all. Okay. Um, no, there's no, 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 no. There's no body pillow. There's no tassels. There's none of that. I think Lauren's Corner is watching. She would be interested in that. You two can maybe get together and come up with your own line of tassel accessorized oxhorn themed body pillows if that's your thing. <clears throat> and I won't judge you publicly for doing so. Cheers. Rachel says, how does the Easter Bunny travel? By hairplane. What time is it? Oh, look at that. It's almost time for the game. Oh. About 12 minutes. Jessica says, I just got Buddy, the drinking robot in Fallout 4. He d says nothing but dad jokes. That's true. Buddy does have some excellent dad jokes. Also, Codsworth. Codsworth has some good jokes, too. Julian Z says, uh, if we were serious about saving the planet, we would stop printing calendars. Their reasons are days... Are numbered. Okay, I'm done for this stream at least. Okay, they're the reason our days are numbered, I think is what he was trying to say. Because of calendars. If only we didn't have calendars, our days would no longer be numbered. Gotcha. Thank you, Julian Z. Timberjack says your password is Oxor Nipple Tassel 76. <laughs> Dang it! Now I have to change it, Timberjack. What? How did you know? Now I had read it out loud. Now I have to change it? God, just ruining everything, Timberjack. <sighs> what I'm going to change it to? Uh, Oxhorn body pillow tassel thong 69. <clears throat> Is that better? Okay. Brandon Beltfed says, I was starving, and tonight my wife was cooking dinner and started bragging about her culinary degree. 
So I told her to make like a chef and chop chop. That's cheers, Ox says Brandon Beltfed. Oh, that's a well, that's okay. I'm I'm glad your wife apparently has a sense of humor about that sort of thing. Corley Gibson became a silver ox. Thank you, Corley Gibson. Alt Grendel says your password is plushy body pillow. Okay, it's I, I'm I'm going back back in time now. Is, are are there more like this? Are you guys gonna come out with more clever passwords for me? Okay, thank you, Alt Grendel. Nuka Tom says, all right, I feel like we can meet you halfway with the body pillow. No, you can't. But if you want to feel that way, fine. We'll concede with a tasteful mouse pad. <laughs> no, because I know exactly what kind of mouse pad you're imagining. And it's not tasteful. It's one of those mouse, mouse pads with the built-in wrist rest, right? I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. And no. I'm not doing that. What would it be? Like, what would be the, the rest part? I don't want to imagine it, man. So don't be weird. Don't be weird on my show. John M says, I happen to be a dad and I like dad jokes. Well, you and I are in the same boat, my friend. I also happen to be a dad. <laughs> Blue Thunder 29 says, oh my God. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, better hide those cocoa. Otherwise, your dog will eat it again before. Well, what worse could have happened next? The, yeah, the chocolate. I already told this story last week, but it wasn't even my fault. I ordered chocolate-filled Easter baskets for the kids for Easter, and I have a box outside my front door that delivery drivers, they're supposed to put the deliveries in. But this guy just decided to throw them at my front step while my dogs were outside. And so, of course, the dogs got into the chocolate. So, well, I mean, I learned a lesson. Don't get chocolate delivered to the house ever again. Blue Thunder 29 says, no, I, I just read that one. Thank you, Blue Thunder. Enclave Deep Space Exploration Program says, hello, Oxhorn. Did you see any evidence of the Enclave being referenced slash turning up on the Fallout TV show? Also, what is your favorite Enclave location? <clears throat> I would have to have seen episodes of the Fallout TV show in order to answer that question. If I had seen episodes of the Fallout TV show, I probably couldn't say that I had. If I had seen episodes, and I could say that I had seen episodes, not that I have, but if I had, I probably wouldn't be able to talk about any details, like whether or not the Enclave comes up in the plot. So if I had, not that I had, but if I had, and would I be free to talk about it? Not that I am, but would I have been free? Um, I wouldn't be able to talk about the Enclave. So no, to the best of my knowledge. <clears throat> my favorite Enclave location has got to be the mobile base crawler was a really fun location. I remember seeing it for the first time and being impressed by how huge it was. And then getting inside and being impressed by the layout. Total War Neighbor and their viewers just joined to say hello. Hey, that's cool. YouTube is doing raids now? When did YouTube start doing raids like Twitch? That's neat. Hey, thank you, Total War Neighbor and, uh, and your audience. Clueless and Callie says, I made a playlist for when I go hiking using music from Peanuts, the Cranberries, and Eminem. I call it my trail mix. That's actually clever, Clueless and Callie. Is, is that a, just a joke, or do you actually do that when you go hiking? Because that's what I'm going to do now. Though I don't really know if those genres go together very well. <laughs> Zombie. While you're hiking, and then a Peanuts song comes on. dun 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 when the real Slim Shady starts talking. Oh, yeah. Jonathan H. says, okay, now that one was funny to me, the hairplane joke, because my grandmother's first language was French, and she would put H's on words like air, lol. 
Hairplane. Oh, okay, I see. Well, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> I wish I could take credit for it. All the best jokes come from you guys. Julian Z says, I recently switched all the labels on my wife's spice rack. She hasn't realized it yet, but the time is... Okay, hold on. I got to read. Uh, I messed it up. I read the mess. I, I, I messed it up. Okay, I got to try this again. Without laughing. I recently switched all the labels on my wife's spice rack. She hasn't realized it yet, but the time is coming. Or the time is cumin. As in... Sorry, I can't help myself, lol. Julian, you're just coming out with the bangers today. Thank you for that one, Julian Z. Man of Warb says, uh, speaking of Hello Kitty, I heard that Bangkok cops are made to wear Hello Kitty badges when they commit abuses. They had to wear armbands as punishment, but those looked cool, so cops intentionally did stuff to earn them. Right. Now they have to wear Hello Kitty badges? That's great. So, oh, so they penalize bad cops by forcing them to wear Hello Kitty. Ooh, ooh. Great. Yeah, I like that. A little bit of humiliation. That's a, that's good. Well, I think we can learn lessons from that. Jared Chover on Facebook says, here's a joke. My wife and I's favorite instrument is the trombone. She especially likes... Really? I got halfway through before I realized that it was a dirty joke. I mean, you know where I'm going with it. It's a brass instrument. What do you do with brass instruments? So that's, yeah, that's the direction. I should have read it first before I, before I read it out loud. Thank you, Jared, for the contribution. The, here's my wife and trombone joke. God. All right, two minutes. Then we dive into the game. Sam S., a member for seven months, says, Hello, Oxhorn. How are you doing? Sorry that it's been a while since I caught your stream. I've been working a lot. I'm doing all righty. Finally got a day off coming up after working two months straight. That's Sam S., otherwise known as Wolf114. Thank you very much, Sam S. Uh, sorry you've been working for so long, two months straight, but I'm glad you got a day off, and I'm honored that you chose to spend that day with the Oxhorn community and myself. We're going to have a great time tonight. Hope you're drinking something nice. Tony J says he stringed you along and played you like a flute, Ox. Yes, he did with his trombone joke. Doc Fearsome says, Oxhorn, <clears throat> if someone prefers ghosts to specters, are they a wraithist? I, I can't, I'm not, I'm not, they don't pay me enough to answer those kind of questions. Those are the big philosophical questions that someone in my position is unqualified to answer, really. It's just too much. It's too big. It covers too much ground. The afterlife and everything? No. Ranker1138 says, Ox won't let any trombone jokes slide. No, I won't. I'm not going to let that slide. I'm repeatedly... Embarrassed by my own reaction to some of these jokes. Jillian Z says, which country has the worst singers? Singapore. Ugh. 
Ooh, that's Singapore. Really? Jillian Z? Wow. Uh, it's time. It's time. It's time. Von Reck gifted 10 Oxhorn memberships to the community. Thank you, Von Reck, and congratulations to IMG Snap, Tiffany Salling, Weenie Beanie Burr, Clyde Kelly, Rodrigo C. Andrade, Norm, Seraph, and Philip Fry, as well as KT and Ludi Coden. And then Mark from Sales immediately afterwards gifted 10 Oxhorn memberships to the community. Thank you, Mark from Sales, and congratulations to Hellcat, Mr. Bear, Z Whitson, Trouble, Sarah Lee, XX Chopper XX, Hawk, Sebastian's no Sebastian's already a member. Pavel, Jason, and Tackless. That's amazing. Thank you so much to both of you, Von Reck and Mark from Sales, and congratulations to everyone on YouTube who snagged one of those memberships. David Garanson says, What do you beat a goat with? A billy club. Because it's a billy goat. I mean, that's for all of those of you out there who get your rocks off by beating goats. Is that what they call it these days? And do you really need a club for that? Nuka Tom says, uh, not sure how in the market you are for chem props, but I found an Etsy seller called Raven Laboratories who makes a lovely glowing blood prop, bagged and bottled. Thank you, Nuka Tom. I have a lot of chems already, but perhaps I'll check it out. Man of Warb says, anyone who dislikes specters has to be indoctrinated and with that I think we should move on to the game thank you men of warb Keith Michael says I used to think I had a Japanese friend but it was just my imagination wow Schumacher became a bronze ox. Thank you, Dale Schumacher. Too loud, says the chat. Check, check, check. Is it clipping? It's clipping. Hold on. La 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 It's still clipping, but only when I yell. All right, it, it'll be it'll be okay. Hold on, let's try something. Right. I think we're okay. Sam S says, "Have you been keeping up with the Fallout TV show?" If you have, what's your opinion on it? I'm curious. Sam S., I have been keeping up with the, with the Fallout TV show. I know you've been out um, for a while, but uh, I actually have published two videos recently on the Fallout TV show that I think you should watch. In those videos, I go over all my thoughts. One is a video I published a couple of months ago responding to some images that were released about the show and then I did a video response to the trailer that was recently released I encourage you to check that out <clears throat> how's that <coughs> Julian Z says okay one more a bit on the raunchy side use your judgment all right uh, 
I guess let's see when we get there. What do they call ghost boobies? Paranormal entities. I mean, it's... If I were 15, I would think that was hilarious. Like, I would be like, ha, ha, ha. Good, good sir. And titties. Oh, really? Uh, so it's all right. We'll, we'll let it pass. We'll let it pass. Here we go. Ian Chamberlain says, first time catching a stream in a while. It's good to see you back, Ian. Okay, so for those of you who didn't miss, or for who, for those of you who missed my last broadcast, uh, uh, let me try to catch you up with the plot so far, if I even understand it. Uh, I'm playing as a private detective. I was hired by a member of this family who has an uncle who was enrolled here in a doctor's private practice, which of course takes place in a big creepy mansion. We're trying to find the uncle, but the uncle disappeared. We're not exactly where, uh, sure where he is, but we find a bunch of artifacts in his office, in his bedroom, and the detective interacts with one which kind of teleports him to an alternate dimension or another place in Louisiana. But then he gets teleported back. He meets the doctor in charge of this facility who gives off a, creeple, a, a creepy um, villain vibe. And now we're trying to figure out what to do next. Okay, let's see. What do we got? Ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. All right, we've got Batiste's keys. We'll do that in a second. What's this? A rubber stamp. It's a lagnape, which is basically just a collectible. Okay, we got a door going out, but before we do that, let's go over here. Broken plates, a clue. Paul, you're right about the plates on the boiler and the clock. They have been sabotaged, and I think I know who did it. They have something to do with Jeremy's episodes and how he seems to disappear at night. Right now, it's important that you keep an eye out for any of the pieces. I want to find out if I can repair the plates. Let me know if you find any of them. Lottie. Tell Lottie to take a look at the well in the kitchen garden. <clears throat> All right. Well, in the kitchen garden. Joe Goodge says this story is so unbelievable. Louisiana isn't real. I know they need to get their facts straight. It's like making a game about Atlantis. Oh. Oh, what? Oh, why did that door close on its own? I don't like doors that close on their own. I'm, I'm against them. Put me in the camp of door... Stop! Stop it! Stop out leaving this door open for a reason? I have my reasons! And I know you're not brave enough to close the door while I'm here, so I'm just gonna stand here. What are you gonna do about it? Okay, I can't stand here forever. I gotta go look at clues. Alright, I'm gonna move now. But don't touch this door. Leave it alone. Warning you. I just get no respect. No respect at all. Staff and patient directory. Dr. Elmore Lee Gray is DeSetto's chief doctor. Accounting and all administrative work is handled by me, Paul Waits. Magdalena Thompson, or Mags, 
is responsible for the household. Jean-Baptiste and Charlotte Tabois are responsible for keeping the guests' medical regiments in check. Finally, Jack Chance is our gardener, who can occasionally be seen in the conservatory, but is, for the most part, busy outside. There are currently six guests at Dossetto. Malcolm McCarthy and Ruth Talant reside on the first floor. Jeremy Hartwood, Elisabetta Perosi, Grace Saunders, and, of course, Cassandra Beauregard live on the second floor. Okay, the audio recording did not correspond to what we see here. Like, there was way more in the audio recording than there was written on this note. Looks like the only room that is empty is uh, room number three. Room number six. Jean-Baptiste Tabois, staff. Repairing the boiler. Saw you notice in the boiler room. You should know Mr. Chance won't be coming back. I got no business being in there myself, but you can take a valve from the wine cellar if you want to try to stop the steam pouring out. Be careful. Okay, um, Valve from the wine cellar will help us repair the boiler room so we can get past that portion. I need the key. <laughs> Rorschach, a lagnape. So that was a Rorschach test. Patience Files. Cassandra Beauregard, the beloved author. Very exciting, isn't it? What do you want to put down for a reason for admission? What her agent told us. Cassandra suffers from writer's block and needs to finish her moving picture script before the end of June. Mr. Chardot suggests Cassandra's heavy use of barbiturates is holding her back and risks ruining her career. And how should we summarize her personal history? Let's keep it short. Cassandra Beauregard is a beloved crime author who managed to pull herself out of poverty and into stardom. Five years ago, she tried killing herself by jumping off a balcony. The incident left her a cripple and now relies heavily on her wheelchair. And for diagnostic impressions? Cassandra suffers chronic back pain following her suicide attempt. She self-administers morphine to keep herself ambulant, but has become addicted and the desired effect is now lost. The drug abuse clouds her mind, and she is unable to focus on real life. To save herself from this insight, she instead makes up stories to fill out the gaps in her own thought process, resembling the Korsakoff syndrome. Oh, bravo, Doctor. How will you treat her? <laughs> First of all, she needs to be weaned from her drug addiction, and hopefully it will resolve her compulsive lying. Then look into permanently numbing her pain in her back through surgery. Finally, deal with her suicidal thoughts. Fantastic. With such a short time before June, I really hope she gets better soon. We will do... Grace Saunders, 11 years old. Reason for admission? The mother insists on strict supervision by a proper gentleman to avoid further perversion of Grace's adolescence. Personal history? What? Grace's family possesses modest wealth and status. Her childhood seems ordinary, spending most of her time with private teachers and family friends. Grace's father recently passed away, leaving her mother the sole caregiver. And diagnostic impressions? Grace has trouble dealing with her father's death. She is willingly suppressing her feelings on the matter and isn't properly acknowledging the trauma she suffered. Any planned treatment? 
Grace needs nothing out of the ordinary. She simply needs parental guidance. Eventually, we can work on her feelings toward her father. Thank you, Doctor. I'll finish the paperwork and get her installed. All right, we got three more to go. Malcolm McCarthy, 54 years of age. Reason for admission? McCarthy admitted himself to Dossetto, stating simply that he needs some damn rest. And personal history. McCarthy claims he used to work as a lawyer in Baton Rouge, but says he can't go into details because of some legal dispute. His background remains largely a mystery, except for the occasional clue that he drops in conversation. Huh. And diagnostic impressions. McCarthy is an anxious man and an alcoholic. He often tells half-truths due to some deep-seated inability to trust other people. And how will you treat that? McCarthy will take some time to open up. Spending time with Jack's dog or the child should be good for him. Their harmless nature will help build his sense of trust. Thank you, Doctor. Man of Warb says, Hello, Ox. Did it ever bug you that Mo Cronin never sells a swatter that does double damage against insects? I mean, that would have been great, right? Man, that's a missed opportunity. Good call. Elisabetta Perosi, 33 years old? What should I put down as reason for admission? Well, Perosi broke into Dossetto and was found wandering the Grand Parlor. She was confused and suffered partial amnesia. She insisted she belonged here and offered to pay for her stay. Right. What do you make of her story? Perosi claims to have been a member of the Astarte artist colony some twenty years ago. A claim that seems contrafactual due to her young age. She looks to be and even thinks she is thirty-three years of age. That would make her a child at the time. It seems fair to say that Perosi's story is untrue, deliberately so or not. Diagnostic impressions? Do you have anything? Perosi's story is peculiar, because she retracted her story about the artist colony. She no longer claims to be the same person as Elisabetta Perosi. However, my staff's research has confirmed there was a Perosi at that time who was in her early thirties. I suppose this case will take some time to investigate. How will you go about it? I wanted to contact the real Perosi, but it seems the whole colony disappeared one night. September 29th, 1915, during a hurricane. I will have to take it slow and figure out what this spell of impersonation could have been. Oh, I'm sure it will all clear up eventually. Thank you, Doctor. Interesting. So she's the... The real Elisabetta Perosi disappeared years ago along with the entire colony in a hurricane. Um, Ruth Talon, 29 years of age. Reason for admission? Uh, Ruth's father wishes that his daughter be removed from New Orleans nightlife for the foreseeable future. He fears that her overly free spirit is tarnishing the uh, family's reputation. Okay. <laughs> Sounds simple enough. Personal history? Ruth comes from considerable wealth. Her family owns several hotels and restaurants. Unlike the rest of the family, her sense of adventure has taken her around the world, including France during the Great War as a photojournalist. The last decade, she has provoked many rumors of being a debauched flapper. Bordering on nymphomania. <laughs> and diagnostic impressions? Despite her father's frivolous reasons for her to be admitted, Ruth does seem to provide an interesting case. She is refreshingly open and doesn't shy away from talking about her life during the war or her continuous celebration after returning to the States. She is admittedly a sexual deviant and feels no remorse. And her treatment plan? Simply staying at Dossetto should do wonders for Ruth. If not, at least for her family's reputation. Ruth doesn't need to change, but with therapy I might be able to share with her some sympathy towards her family. I doubt she will settle down and become as dull as the rest of them, but at least she might try to be more discreet in the future. 
She was the one who uh, said those rather inappropriate comments about our character here upon seeing him for the first time. Looks like all the patients are accounted for, except for Jeremy. All right, we got a safe. There's no way I can get into this thing. Better leave it alone. Right. Not yet. Okay, well, we've got a key to room six. We need to go to the wine cellar, and that door is locked. And we need to go to the garden and get into the well. Lots to do. Why do the doors always close? Lock from the other side. Press I to open the map. The map is updated with information about the world. Okay, so we are here in the stairwell. We just tried to get into Dr. Gray's office through the side door, only to discover that it was bolted. There is a door into the clerk's office, which is locked, and there was a puzzle here in the clerk's office. I don't recall that. What was that all about? I gotta see. What was the puzzle... Was that the safe? Yeah, that's the locked door, and then that must be the safe. Okay, so the puzzle was the safe. Walt Grendel says maybe he's being followed, yeah, by somebody who just has to have every door closed. Maybe. Right, let's go upstairs and explore room six. Wow. These aren't distressing at all. Oh. That's it? Just... Oh. Oh. Art. Hmm. Art. It's stained. Looks like some kind of rot. This must be the clock that Jeremy wrote about in the commonplace book. Huh. Looks like the plate that held the talisman in the seance room. But it's broken and missing some pieces. Astronomical clock. All right, we need to fix that. Let's see. Uh, is it showing us? Do we need to go? Yeah, we need to go up. No. Nope. Here we are. All right, so we're in the gallery. Right in front of the door to the sitting room. Hmm. I need the key. That's it. Okay, so we can't explore that just yet. <clears throat> Looks like we go down. Wait, no. Let's check this room. <laughs> Yeah, uh, sorry, detective. Didn't mean to obstruct justice or anything. That's fine. You know, I'm kind of busy with my own case of a missing person. I, I was wondering if you've seen Grace, a girl about yay high. I can't say that I have. Why are you asking? Well, I'm looking for her. Is she in trouble? No, 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 no. Uh, she's just hiding somewhere. But we can't have a rascal like that running around un checked a time like this you understand well i haven't seen her well let me know if you find her i'll be around uh i'll keep an eye out for your man jeremy you scratch my back detective and i'll scratch yours what 
that's not how I would phrase it. You scratch my back by telling me the whereabouts of a young girl, and I'll scratch yours. Okay, creep. That was weird. <sighs> okay. This door... Huh. Okay, so the puzzle leads to Dr. Gray's apartment. At the end of this hall is another puzzle leading to the servant's stairs. The next two doors lead to the mezzanine. And we've got bedrooms on the southern side. Let's explore the bedrooms. Looks like everything's back to normal here. Okay. Was there anything I missed? Locked steamer trunk. Emily is here, Clue. Emily is here. Emily is here. Emily is here. All right, picture of Emily. This door led us out into the vision of uh, Louisiana earlier. And then that's it. So that's Jeremy's room. Is this number six? No. This is Batiste's room, and the next one over is Perosi's room. Was Batiste the drunk that we just met? Probably. I mean, according to the state of everything we see. Fountain pen, Lagnape. Boxing gloves. All right, just to refresh myself, Batiste, uh, let's see. That's staff, Jean Batiste. So that's number five, which means that P Perosi is number six, and that's the key we just got. So Jeremy's was number four. That's the guy we were here for. Um... Okay, Batiste was not the drunk. So this is the room of staff. A whole lot of empty. Ooh, cockroaches, gross. Oh. Didn't we get a key? Oh, room six key. Yeah, there we go. Huh. How eccentric. What are these symbols? Looks like alchemy or star constellations. Rosie's journal. You may need to remember how to get them out again. They are locked up for good reason. I am sure she is still able to whisper the answer in the ears of the wrong people. But not for long. I will see her burn soon enough. That black goat will be sacrificed to put an end to it all. Then it will all be over. No more Derseto, and sadly, no Astarte. Those good pirates of Poncha Train. May you still sail the lake until you find the shores of Hali. Okay. I'm sure I'll understand that later. We've got Aquarius number one, Sagittarius number 11, and Scorpio number 10. Oh. Oh, 
hold on here. I must return. I did it. I crossed the thresholds to my intended destination without a focusing device. My talisman now knows these roads, and I have no need for the plates. I can find my way to Lafayette as easy as I find my own room. I visited the grave of my father and seen the oven waiting for me. Thank you for opening these doors. I now must summon my courage and go back to that hateful mound outside the oil rig. I hope you'll be feeling better when I return. Jeremy. Why is that on her bed, though? All right, we got some interesting pictures here of that same rot. James Mc McMannon? These paintings got some grim-looking rot on them. William Argus. Franklin Mossig. Brian Gumfrey. Philippe J. Curtis. And Nora Keith. Well, do we just go in order? Aquarius, okay, we're, I don't know, water, arrow, M. These aren't astrological symbols. Hmm. At least the ones we need aren't on there. Okay, that was Perosi's room. Uh, we are about to enter the mezzanine, which leads to the stairwell. The store was locked. I wonder if these two doors will be locked as well. Oh, that's locked too. Crap. Well, that leaves the other two puzzles, the well in the garden, and... Where did we find the thing for the boiler room? Okay, let's see where we are. That goes to the piazza. We can get outside from the piazza? I need the key. that that was the key to the library lost plantations of Louisiana lost plantations of Louisiana Terry Bricklow 1917 Desato was a small plantation on the eastern shore of Lake Pontchartrain. The land was considered difficult for industry and was sold for only $30 to Elijah Pickford in 1818. Pickford employed hundreds of workers from nearby New Orleans to clear the woods and build a small plantation mansion facing the lake with a striking Greek Revival temple facade. Desato kept a modest production of barrique tobacco and indigo that persisted up till the Civil War. 
During the antebellum era, Deseto was the source of many rumors concerning voodoo and witchcraft. People who traveled the lake reported seeing people dance at night in front of bonfires, bleating and wailing. On June 17, 1862, Captain J.W. Norton of the Union Army recounts leading a raiding party from ships anchored in Lake Pontchartrain in order to seize control of Deseto and free the slaves working there. The captain was surprised to find the workers fighting back with unprecedented zeal. Norton's account describes these men and women as enraged with fanaticism. Pickford reportedly tried to placate the raiders, but was shot in the confusion. Captain Norton left the mansion burning and retreated to his ships with his men. Deseto was left in ruins for several decades. The ownership of the land was long disputed and returned to the Ledoux family in 1901. Several police reports were filed during the following years as the Ledoux tried to get rid of a camp of squatters on their land. The police made several visits to remove the trespassers, but the people kept returning. On November 1, 1907, Inspector Legras of the police charged a deadly attack in order to save several children kidnapped by the squatters. Yikes. Many were killed, and even more were jailed. The following year, Ledoux rebuilt Deseto, incorporating the surviving stone foundation and adding a magnificent wrought iron conservatory. The farmland had been reclaimed by the surrounding woods, so it was no longer profitable to use as a plantation. Instead, the house was turned into an artist's colony. The Astarte Artist Colony was a successful group of artists, including figures such as painter Heinrich Cassel and poet Nora Keith. The group was also known for their beloved Mardi Gras crew called the Pirates of Pontchartrain. <sighs> On September 29, 1915, a tropical hurricane tore through Louisiana, causing Lake Pontchartrain to flood New Orleans. Due to the remote location of their settle, it took almost two weeks for outsiders to learn that the artist's colony was abandoned. The twelve residing artists had all vanished without a trace. The empty mansion of Der Seto still stands on the shore of Lake Pontchartrain, with much of its temple facade intact. The Ledoux family currently has no intention of repairing the house. So that was the artist commune that we learned about in... Uh, God, that's a lot of notes. Uh, where was that one note we found? Okay, this talks about the Pirates of Pontchartrain. Okay, suddenly this note makes a lot more sense. No more Derseto, and sadly no Astarte. The Astarte was the artist commune. And now we understand her comment on the Pirates of Ponch Terrain. It was a Mardi Gras float, essentially, that she was a part of. So she has memories of that time. She is one of the real artists who lived at that commune, who disappeared in the hurricane years ago. What happened? How did she get back? <laughs> this, man, this is a man after my own heart. He sees a shotgun and goes, ooh. <laughs> Reminds me of a Nacho Libre. Ooh. Okay, that goes outside. Where does this go? Hello. It's wedged shut. Another door wedged shut.
Well, we needed the bats to appear to find the bolt cutters. Everything's normal again? See, this is one of those doors that we found. Okay, uh, well, we've got the bolt cutters now. Okay, I still can't go in there. Let's see if we can find the well. That leads down to an area we've already explored. That goes back outside. That's a fountain, not a well. Well in the garden. Well in the garden. Okay, do you hear whispers? Do you hear whispering noises? I hear whispers. I don't like that I hear whispers. Okay, so we need to remind ourselves, uh, repairing the boiler, uh, the wine cellar. We need to go to the valve in the wine cellar. Oh, now we can't go in there? What? How is this suddenly just not accessible? Okay. One thing at a time, I guess. Camera? Did you see a camera icon appear for just a moment? Hmm. There's the well. Huh. A mummified cat. Ah, oh, that's normal. We are getting all the lag napes. <laughs> that was the save symbol, says chat. Oh, okay. I thought it was like wanting me to pull out the camera. No, that was the save. Okay. Chin editor says, Ox, die so we can drink. I'm thirsty. Listen, the drinking game was never from me. You want to drink, drink all you want. Or none at all. I'm not advocating for drinking excessively. I'm just saying. Colonel 87th says, Assassin's Creed Odyssey has me mad. They took away the boobies. But you know, male private is fine. I don't get it. Boobies in Assassin's Creed Odyssey? Were there boobies in Assassin's Creed Odyssey? I must have played on like a censored version of the game because I don't remember any, any boobies. Have they removed the adult version of the game? <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. What can we get? We can't get the shovel. I mean, we could totally use that shovel to get whatever's in there, but apparently not. Apparently, we need to raise the level of the well by pouring water into there using this hose that we need to turn on. So let's follow the hose, follow the hose. Ah. Yeah. 
Got it. Hey. Are those eyes in the barrel? Are those are those eyes? It's just a cat, right? If I walk close to it, it's just going to be a cat that jumps out, right? Just a cat. <laughs> a big cat, okay? It's just a big cat. Hey, kitty, kitty, kitty. Nah, nothing. Alright. Let's turn on the water. Let's attach the hose. And there we go. Ooh. A broken plate. Ah, that's for the thing upstairs. Got it. Okay. Now, where's the wine cellar? <sighs> it's locked now. We just explored all of this and it's all locked now? Fine. Wolfpack41 says, Ah, how I've missed watching Oxhorn play. And no, there weren't, I think. Okay. Well, Wolfpack, I'm so glad you're back. Welcome to the broadcast. Let's now try to solve this puzzle. I believe it was upstairs. Yeah, you're right, it's a safe. Okay, I'm missing a piece still. Right, objective. McCarthy reminded Detective Conby of an old bar fly he used to know. He detested him. There was no getting around it. McCarthy was going to have a hard time getting on his good side. Why? What? Okay, find Dersetto's boiler mentioned in the commonplace book. We found that earlier, but all of the doors to the boiler room are locked. Repair the decorative plate on the astronomical clock. We did one. We need one more piece. Figure out the combination for the lock using information found in Perosi's room. Using information found in Perosi's room. Oh, so her room has all of the information we need to figure out the combination lock. Okay, well, that changes things then. Which one was Perosi's room? Where's this one? <sighs> okay, there's the combination lock. It appears to have astrological symbols on it, but when we take a look at the map that we've got, the only ones that are marked are Aquarius, Sagittarius, and Scorpio, but Aquarius, Sagittarius, and Scorpio are not on here. Maybe it's simpler than that. Or not. They were locked for good reason. I am sure she is still able to whisper the answer in the ears of the wrong people, but not for long. I will see her burn soon enough. That black goat will be sacrificed to put an end to it all. Then it will all be over. Okay, so someone whispers me the combination. Who is she? 
She will be able to whisper the answer in the ears of the wrong people. Who is she? Do I need to go whisper? Or do I need to go find someone whispering at me? One eleven ten. The clock? Grass clock. But I can't get a close up of it. How do I get closer to that? So 11 is the pillar, oh, but 10 isn't on anything. So if it's 1, 11, 10. That doesn't make sense because 12, 11, and 10 are one symbol. Those are Roman numerals, and up there, I can't tell what that is. Try the painting, says the chat. All right, I, I remember the paintings had names on them. I don't recall them having astrological symbols on them. Notice that some of them have rot marks on them where the others don't. Okay, sound effects. I did something right. Oh. You're starting artist colony. I remember hearing about their disappearance. Must have been 15 years or more now. Well, if 11110 doesn't work here because it, it ends at 9. There's Elisabetta Pirozzi as number seven. Odd that they are numbered. Jeff Day says, Nothing like watching an ox stream while at work. Thanks for the 20 months of great content. Thank you, Jeff Day. Thanks for watching. Glad you're back from work. Hope you're enjoying a good drink. Okay, so... They do have names. Maybe the names correspond to what we find on the wall. However, we already kind of solved that one by flipping them in the appropriate order. And now we can't interact with it. Oh, William Argus, 
Franklin Mossig and Nora Keith. William Moss, Franklin Mossig is nine. William Argus is two. And Nora Keith is four. Two, nine, four. Two, nine, four. Safe combination? Oh, wait. No. Okay, so 294. Let's try the safe combination. Yeah, I'm going the wrong way. I'm not going to walk out of this now. I need to help Emily save her uncle. There's no way I can get into this thing. Better leave it alone. I mean, I've got the combo. It's 294, right? Two. Why is it always this freaking dial? Nine. Whoops. Four. There's no way I can get into this thing. Two. Better leave it alone. Nine. Four. I gotta pass it, right? There's no way I can get into this thing. Two. Better leave it alone. Nine. Four. Why is it always a freaking rotary combination lock? All right, so that's not it. That's still mm. locked. I need the key. All right, let's see. Got the safe puzzle here. No, that's the safe puzzle. Which leads to Dr. Gray's office. No, no, no. The door leads to Dr. Gray's office. The safe puzzle, we need a different combination. Uh... There is a puzzle here, but we can't even get through this door. We can't even get into the mezzanine yet, which leads to the stairwell. Did we try that door? There was another combination lock, though, wasn't there? There was a combination lock somewhere. Was it that one that led to the drawing room? I remember from last week.
Zarteth says padlock, zodiac, zodiac lo- clock, 12 twixt, one and two marked, rock around accordingly. There's the Zodiac clock. Twelve twixt one and two marked. Rock around accordingly. So on the note, it says one, ten, and eleven. One is on that Zodiac sign, which kind of looks like a four. Ten is between these two Zodiac signs. And 11 is that zodiac sign as well. So we could try that. So we've got we've got the four looking one for one. We've got the two half circles looking one for 11. They're not really matching. So that's kind of the half the half circles. But it's hard to see. One and eleven, you goof in her journal, says Zarteth. What do you what do you mean? One and eleven? One is Aquarius and 11 is Sagittarius. They're not on the lock. That was the very first thing I did. Aquarius, Sagittarius, and Scorpio are not on the combination lock. Look for the water symbol. We go all the way around and there's no water symbol. Look for the M symbol. There's no M symbol either. Look at the pictures, says Zarteth. Am I missing something? The only ones on the clock were Pisces and I'm looking at the symbols. The one. Oh, if this was a clock. Oh. So they're not written on the right ones. Well, then why the numbers? So one would be Aries. I mean, 11 and 10 are right next to each other. It'd be Aquarius. So one would be between Pisces and Aries. Six would be between Virgo and Libra. If we go 10 and 11, then that's between Pisces and Aquarius. Again, we've got the same problem as as Aquarius isn't on there. They are the symbol numbers. Zarteth says 12 between 1 and 11. So Capricorn is 12. Capricorn is between the 11 and the 1. What? Alt Grendel says, read Vince M's comment. Okay. <laughs> Take the numbers from each person, two, nine, and four. Take those numbers and apply them to the drawing in Perosi's journal. Count around from one and you'll get the locks combination. The locks combination? 
Which lock? Okay. Two, nine, and four. So if this is one, two would be Taurus. Two. Three. Four would be Leo. Five, six, seven, eight, nine would be Capricorn. Taurus, Leo, Capricorn. Okay, fine. What, why then do they have 1, 11, and 10 written here? 1, 11, and 10? What does that mean? If we've got 2, 9, and 4, Taurus, Leo, and Capricorn. I don't know astrology. I don't remember. Circle horns, sperm cell, and then the, the, the N. But that's not on there either. Circle horns, sperm cell. There's no cap there's no Capricorn. The picture is sideways, says says Jamar. Oh, so if that's a clock, we gotta Oh! Oh, so it's, oh, it's, oh my God. Okay, so we turn it like that. So if that's one, two is Pisces, three, four is Taurus, five, six, seven, eight, nine is Libra. Pisces, Taurus, Libra. Pisces, Taurus, Libra. Right? Pisces. Two, nine, then four. Oh, right, 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 right. Two, nine, then four. Got it. That was stupid. It was stupid. I didn't like it. It wasn't funny. Didn't enjoy it. It's too much. Stupid puzzle. Freaking things. Huh? Get down! Yeah, I'm not gonna walk through it. Wait, you want me to walk through it? No. There's little leeches and slugs over there. I'm not, I'm gonna wait for it to go away. Waiting for it to go away. Come on, automatically closing door. Now's your chance to automatically close. Thank you. Bye, nightmare. I'm giving up on you. The new guy, 95, says best 15 minutes of the stream. It was a stupid puzzle. I didn't like it. <laughs> it's dumb. I didn't like it. No. Okay. It's not going away. Really? Does that stinger music happen every time we enter the hallway? <sighs> Let's try it again. Ah, oh, the door is closed. Stinger music. Oh. And it's a different octave each time. Huh? Oh, oh. It's just as terrifying as the second and third time. Come on, door close. Close any time. I can't handle the stinger music. It's so terrifying. Ah, more stinger music. Run away. <laughs> What's going to happen? Come on, abruptly end and then start again. Huh? Ah, it's terrifying. 
back. Oh, God. Oh. Okay, you leeches. Ouch. I didn't like that. It slammed this time, man. What you were closing them so gently earlier, Poltergeist? What the hell is going on? You got to slam it now. <laughs> Zartath says, "Shows me to be cryptic with my clues, so as not to spoil it for you. Never change, Ox. At least not on Thursdays." Oh, so you knew, and you were trying to. To explain it to me in a subtle way, I guess I guess I didn't need subtle at that moment in time. I needed blatant. I need, <laughs> just blatantly tell me the answer, please. I think I've seen this somewhere. Okay. Well, criminy. Where have we seen it? I don't know. Something in the commonplace book about this. Commonplace book. All right. Ah, uh, there it is. Okay. Thank you for reminding me, oh omnipotent game narrator. So it's like a four with cracks going over there. Okay. Yeah? No? Well, the cracks aren't in it. Up and to the left, straight across, down into the... No, up and to the right, straight across, down into the left, and then down almost vertical. And then there are symbols on there, but they're not actually depicted in the actual thing. But I got that right. I lined up all the cracks. Oh, there are other symbols. Oh, okay. So I need, it's the... Uh, that one does have partially. Okay, so if those two are right, then it's got to be these two. I think the clock broke. Or maybe it just stopped at a very precise place. Three, four, six. Three, four, six. 
Is that the combination lock? Do I need to worry about the astrological symbols? What order is it in? Smallest to biggest or biggest to smallest? Six, four, three, or three, four, six? Hmm. Oh, man. I don't even remember how I got this to work last time. What the heck? Well, there's six. I don't even remember how this is supposed to work. Four. Oh, I see now. Three. No, maybe it's three, four, six. Oh, it was six, four, three. There's a picture in the black glass. It's showing me something. It's the hallway outside Jeremy's room. And the camera points me the right, the right way. All right, thank you. All right, so I'll tell you how it's supposed to work. It's not intuitive. So basically... Each of these rings has an arrow, and you, you guys probably figured this out a long time ago, but when you spin it, the numbers will point to the arrow, so you sp it spins the whole thing when you spin the outer ring. So you spin the outer ring to the first number until this small arrow points to it. Then that's going to freeze this ring in place, and then you spin these two rings until the next number points to that arrow. Then that's going to freeze this ring in place, and then you spin this ring until the number points to that arrow. So... I got it. Devin Byron says, missed my earlier chat, boss man. Sorry, Devin. Let me see if I can find it. Devin Byron says, I'm sure <clears throat> it's been asked, but what's the official Oxhorn rating of Starfield? What would make it better? Thanks for the amazing content over the, the years. You're welcome. The official Oxhorn rating would be like uh, seven, I guess, out of ten. Uh, what would make it better? Well, uh, if there was a reason to work on your colonies, then I would use the colony builder, but there's really no story driven reason for doing so. And it doesn't really help you financially. Like there's no real game mechanic impetus to work on the colony builder. Um, so that would be one of the major things for me. Vince M says, no worries, Ox. Glad you figured out the puzzle. Thank you, Vince M. Vince M says, not the eerie music. Anything but the eerie music. The eerie music is the true enemy. Okay, so we saw a vision of the furniture pile at the end of the hallway and the door to Jeremy's room. <sighs> oh no, darkness. What is it with all of the opening doors in this game? Oh, nature. Yay, I like nature. I'm gonna go over here. Nope, can't go over here. Okay. More bats. But Stavo Plays says, with your mastery in puzzle solving, I would pay money to see you play a Professor Layton game, lol. Would be a 50-part stream. 10-hour game, by the way. Uh, <laughs> just, I love your confidence in me. Thank you very much. But Stavo Plays. Did you see his eyeballs for a minute there? <laughs> As we were walking through the door, we just clipped through his head and saw his eyeballs. Brilliant, guys. Huh. 
I made it. I entered another one of Jeremy's memories. And we get another clue. Look for Jeremy inside the hateful mound beyond the oil rig. I can't use my bolt cutters on that? I guess not. Oil rig report. May 1923. Monday. All okay. Ready for delivery. Maintenance. Oil pump must be serviced. Any tampering causes large spills unless properly forestalled. Tuesday. Shipment delayed but delivered. Maintenance. Service bridge close to broken. Wednesday. Prospectors reluctantly agreed to show the burial mound to Mr. Hotwood, a painter read about our finds in the papers. He means to return tomorrow and try to find a way inside. Thursday. Mr. Hartwood's efforts delayed. Workers seemed nervous about his presence. Hartwood promised not to return to the compound. Instead, he has taken up an offer by L'Officier, the riverboat captain, who means to pilot him to the site tomorrow morning. Hopefully that's the end. Work can resume. Maintenance. Bridge from the oil tower to the bayou has collapsed. Sabotage suspected. This is the devil that guides us now. <laughs> this is the devil that guides us now. Old man speak scary creepy. Huh. Mm -hmm. Yay! This is the devil that guides us now. I need the key. Hmm. Right, big barn. So the door goes out to a little shack over here. Oh, lots of destroyed shacks down that way. Okay, we see some light. That means we go here. Stop swaying! It just... What? What? Why does it stop swaying? The Raging Krogan says, Ox, will you be doing something special for your 800th Scotch and Smokering stream? Maybe you should bring that fellow with the horns and the red skin back for it? 
I mean, everyone told me that the devil showed up for episode 666, but I, I don't remember that. I wasn't there for that. I don't know why he would show up for episode 800. Maybe I will. We'll see. Just gotta eat some dino nuggies again, right? Jordan Locked. Sharpless became a, a gold ox. Thank you, Jordan Sharpless. Oh, now it's swaying again. Uh-huh, I see. Why is it moving so... What? <laughs> this is not how it works, guys! This is not how physics works! Unless there's somebody inside it rocking it back and forth. Oh, yeah, okay, all right. Well, maybe there is. Oh, oh well, what was that? I don't like that. I don't like it. There's something missing. Bullets. Jetty key. Full drink. All right, how do I use drink? I gotta figure this out. Because I'm wounded, I could heal myself, but I don't know how to drink. It's not the number pad. How do I switch? I can, I can only, how do I switch to the drink? It says the D-pad, but there's no D-pad on the keyboard. How do I switch? The number pad? Consume G. Okay, well, there we go. It's G. It has nothing to do with the number pad. It's just G. Got a freaking bush. Come on, man. Why this game? Ah, I'm stuck in a bush. Let me out. Ah, finally. Okay, note to self always take the stairs. Don't try jumping off of anything. Just take the stairs. That's why they're there. of them out there. If I leave them alone, maybe they'll leave me alone. Do I just start shooting? Do I just start blasting caps in their mossy backs? Maybe I'll, if I don't do anything, they'll stay there. Fishkey says, so how's the game? Been thinking about getting it. <laughs> the game is... It's alright. <laughs> it's it's alright. But I get... Ooh, I got a, I got a new melee weapon. Oh, drop down. Yeah, no thanks. I don't want to drop down. Oh, okay. That's the quick way out. Right. If I just leave them alone, they'll leave me alone. I'm hoping. Ooh. 
Bridge lever. Okay. <sighs> Got it. Full drink. Something. I hear something. I don't like what I'm hearing. <clears throat> Man of Warb says, I remember find, uh, when finding out about zodiac signs for the first time, I pronounced Pisces not as Pisces, but as a bodily function. My aunt couldn't stop laughing. Pisces? All right. I always thought it was Pisces because of, like, pie. P-I? Pi? Pisces, not pieces. P pieces of pieces. Walker Wayne 28 says, I almost got stuck in a bush once. <laughs> I guess it's realistic. You do get stuck in bushes. So maybe that adds to the realism. Alt Grendel says, PC Gamer says, G to heal. Yeah, I figured it out. G to heal. Not the D-pad, as it shows on my screen, because it's a, it's a port. It's a console port. <coughs> Screw you! Oh, God, what? But of course it was hiding underground. Just... What the? Not fair. Well, now I gotta go back and get that drink. And melee weapon. I'm out of a melee weapon now. I gotta go back and get it. Oh, if he spawns again. He better not spawn again when I drop down here. Wasn't there another drink somewhere around here? Or was it back in the other place? Oh, it was back in the other place, wasn't it? I gotta get it. Who knows what'll happen? I gotta have as much health as I can possibly get. There was one more drink that I did not get. Man, these crocs in the bayou are nasty. Hello. Yay. There it is. Drink. Yay. Ugh. do stealth here. Super secret detective stealth. Look how low I am. This is my sneak mode. That's standing. And that's stealth. That is a, that is really swaying. Is 
Is that is that how physics work? Is that how it works with physics? Maybe there's a gust of wind. It's like Tomb Raider, where gusts of wind can push anything from pillars to entire rock surfaces. What? what? <laughs> it's clipping and everything. What is? Wow, that's just amazing. That's just amazing. Yay, another weapon, but I have one. Nothing! Crap. <laughs> Jordan Sharpless says, just subbed and gifted two more on Twitch to support as well, but I only have one question. What are we drinking slash puffing tonight, Ox? Thank you, Jordan Sharpless. Awesome. Baron Von Grimm on Twitch also wonders what I'm drinking. I'm drinking two things. I've got some 14-year-old uh, Glenlivet and some Kraken rum and Coke. As for smoking, uh, I'm smoking, what is it called? A shadow rum. Shadow run? Shadow thin? I can't read the font on this. King! King! Shadow King! Yay, drink. Hello. Discarded pallet, a lagnape. We are getting all sorts of lagnapes. Let's see, we need one more to complete the Crescent City set, one more to complete the Lost Children set, and that's it. Hey. <laughs> He's so surprised whenever he finds anything. Hmm. Hey. The new guy says this game is set before crouching was invented. I know, it's like, it's a half crouch. It's like, it's a ready stance. It's, he's almost crouched. He's like, kind of, kind of wants to stealth, but not really. He's got bad knees. That's what it is. It's, it's an achy back and bad knees. The Raging Krogan says, one day we will get you to acknowledge that doll. The Raging Krogan, I don't know what doll you're trying to get me to acknowledge. Oh, oh no, cutscene. Oh. <laughs> Bad back, what did I say? Now he's not gonna be able to crouch at all. <laughs> Let me shoot it! Let me shoot it! That's an ugly croc! Oh look, he can still crouch. Okay, he's still, he's all right. That fall didn't hurt. That is one ugly croc. Oh. What's that? Is that a brick? New melee weapon. Oh yeah, I got an ax now. All right, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. Ah! Whoops, I think I wasted it. I got it. At least he's slow. What do I do with this? I still understand the, the stealth mechanics in this game. I haven't even really seen a stealth opportunity yet. They just sort of pop out of the ground and surprise you. Looks pretty weak. 
I just need something to break it. Of cocktail? Huh? Like, do I throw it before they pop out of the ground? Or after? Because they just pop out of the ground. Where's my other melee weapon? There it is. Okay, um, I need to break down that barricade, but I've also got a house to explore here. Let's explore the house. Is that a shovel? Oh yeah, a shovel weapon. Nice. I'm gonna thwack things with a shovel. I got a shovel and I'm not afraid to use it. Dig you a grave with this shovel after I kill you with it. Yay, booze. Another shovel. Which shovel is better? This shovel. I like this shovel better. Right, more bullets. Keep me topped up, please. What's this? It's a little locker. More drink, but I'm full. Okay. There we go. I am an alcoholic detective, and I'm not ashamed. It gets me through life. All right, time to thwack it. Who needs an axe? I got a shovel. Yeah, I'm sure they'll just leave me alone if I ignore them, you know. I'll crouch just for, just for kicks. Vinny Caddy says, I've been watching you since I was in sixth grade. I am now a senior in high school. I'm joining the Marines next year. And it's crazy that I've watched almost every single Fallout lore videos. You carried my childhood. Vinny Katie, uh, congratulations on graduating high school, uh, on getting ready to graduate high school. Good luck in the Marines. And I'm so pleased that um, you allowed me to be part of your childhood. Thank you very much for watching. BA says it's called the safety crouch ox. Things can't get you when you crouch. Yeah, I'm all about the safety crouch. They should make a song. You can crouch if you want to. You can leave that dance behind. Because your friends can't crouch. And if they can't crouch, then they're no friends of mine.
I hear lots of them. <laughs> Where are they? So bad at that. It's a safety crouch. Oh. I hug the edge and don't go in the middle of the road, maybe they won't spawn. Let's go around the the perimeter of this area. Cause you know they're just gonna jump out of the ground and Oh, we got music. Don't get me demonetized music, please. Ah! Is it in the water? Is that another shovel? Well, why can't I get that shovel? I guess I can only use certain shovels. Marine 98 says, Oorah, Marine. Oorah, indeed. A gazing statue, Laganape. Cool. Walker Wayne 28 says, I believe it would be interesting if you did a Q&A. Well, my friend, you missed the first hour of the broadcast because every Thursday night for the past 15 years or so, I have done Scotch and Smoke Rings, which is an hour long Q&A and then three hours or so of gaming. So if you missed the Q&A, tune in next week. Same Ox time, same Ox channel, 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time, and you can, uh, you can, uh, join the Q&A. Beast of Burden. <clears throat> so the Mummified Cat, the Beast of Burden, and one more to complete the set. Can I talk to that 
gazelle? Is that a gazelle? Like an Alan Wake 2? Nothing. Why did he say, hmm? Okay, there's something on the ground right over here. I wonder if I can shoot it out. Or if I have to wait for it to get... <laughs> Press left control to sneak. I am sneaking! I have been sneaking. Can I sneak past it? Is stealth a viable option in this game? I did it! Yay! Stealth does work! Hooray! For stealth! Yeah! Eat it! Zip line, really? Tough cloth, a key item. That is a tough cloth. Cloth. What do I do with a tough cloth? Ah, come on, Carly. You'd rather fall to your death than go up in flames. Okay, here we go. Zip line. Ah, oh, okay. I want to lose the hat. <laughs> yeah, you gotta keep that trill be intact. Full pistol bullets. 
Oh, I've been doing well. Okay. Well, what's going to haunt us in these woods? I dare not run. Oh, what? What? Oh, what? Oh, man. I gotta get my feet wet? Oh, man. I guess I was too far away. Oh, now he's getting up. Oh, death. oh cutscene, right? Cutscene, of course. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. Uh, he couldn't see me. I'm gonna go back and get those bullets. So, limited sight potential for that guy. Okay. Oh, I hear it. Oh, what is that? Oh! Ah! Things flying by. Are those bodies? What is that? Snorting, it's like a horse. Ah, and the shadows, they keep flying by me. mound Jeremy talked about in his book. thing out of my face who are you what are you doing here I'm just a detective trying to find something called Tarawea you after Jeremy too why I'm working for his niece she wants to make sure he's all right he might be unharmed but far from all right he's a curse upon Deseto uh, here we go again quiet other people doing in Jeremy's dream or Jeremy's it's not a dream it's a vision or a past what did we get 
a palette knife. Intended for painting, but it's thin enough to slide through the crack of a door. Reflections on the power of the verb in certain texts. Reflections on the power of the verb in certain texts by Juan Luis Jorge. To act is in itself divine. Even the slightest movement of our hand is evidence of our soul in motion. Yet our free will is so easily overwhelmed by the dullness of everyday life. Our actions become rote and rigid in spite of luxury and comfort. True divinity is found in the choice of leaving the stage where we all perform. People who discover this freedom unexpectedly will be struck by the terror of this revelation and become paralyzed, or worse, turn to suicide. However, if you are able to weather that storm, you will discover that there is a divine path beyond that fear. There is a chance to dismount your destiny and make something new. Something that hasn't been planned for or predestined. There is difficulty in explaining this type of acting as it transcends our everyday choices. This isn't some banal decision choosing one career over the other, or even who I should marry. Leaving the stage, no matter how, isn't a matter of course correction. It's a rejection of the story that the creator is telling. Because choosing your spouse is a banal decision, right? The Great Library. So that's the constellation Taurus. Is that the constellation that was carved into that sphere puzzle that we solved? Sitting room key. Right, I can now access the sitting room. I can now access all doors that are wedged shut. That's a bolted door. I won't be able to open that. That's a blocked door. Could I open that? Bolted, blocked, and locked. I guess I could try the blocked doors. I just want the shotgun. Why can't I get the shotgun? I need it. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Don't talk about it. Just give me the shotgun. All right. Well. It's wedge shot. It worked. Okay, the radio needs to decide if it wants to be on or not. Make up your mind. I can't have you coming on and off. It's distracting. I'm trying to focus. Parlor? What is this room? Drawing room. I don't think I have everything I need. Barrow Lens Instructions. The Barlow Lens Instructions. Barlow. To double the magnification of your telescope, simply fit this Barlow Lens to your instrument. Then operate the fine tuners to adjust the distance between your lenses. This is easily done while looking through your eyepiece. Simply search for a position where your picture is clear and appears flat. When correctly tuned, your telescope should present a clear picture with magnificent magnification. Magnificent. I guess that's the lens? No, that's the cellar key. Well. Dog collar? Oh, it's a lag nape. That finishes the lost children. Yay. Unlocks the shotgun cabinet. Oh, yay. I had, I had to... That unlocks the shotgun cabinet? Really? Secret objective. Forbidden knowledge. Unlocks a hidden memory in the attic. 
Oh. What's this? Oh, I want the shotgun. Give me the shotgun. Now we're talking. Yay! So how do I switch between the two? One is the pistol. Two is the shotgun. Okay, so I don't have the uh, Barlow lens. It's in the sitting room or the cellar. Sitting room, upstairs, by the gallery. wasn't locked before and look there's smoke coming out what oh no is there a fire crap is there a fire in the mansion Oh, screw you guys and all! Oh! <laughs> what? This is stupid! This is to teleport me to another world and spawn guys on me! Pat Bordeaux says, Lagnape is pronounced Lanyap. It's French. Alright, I'll try to remember that. Lanyap. Oh, they had a pickaxe right here. <laughs> I had to get through the fight first. Hey, shotgun shells! That would have been great! Yeah, let me loot these things before you send these guys after me! Oh. <laughs> he agrees. He's like, oh, this is just bullcrap. <laughs> All right. Uh, wait a minute. That door above me. Was it wedged shut? Yeah, I think it was. So I could use the pallet knife to get in there. It's wedged shut. It worked. Okay, what now? But now you're jerk. It's gonna lead me to the mezzanine. Oh. Did you hear that commotion, lady? No? Detective Conby. How good of you to come. Let me pour you a drink. Oh, you know me. I like drink. What Rum. happened here? This place looks like it was hit by a bomb. <laughs> Welcome to the madhouse, detective. Thanks. Did the ceiling just collapse? I heard it was something in the attic. Something that was supposed to happen, but didn't. How that could have such consequences is beyond me. The truth is, 
I don't know why the room looks like this. But I bet your friend Jeremy does. You know where I could find him? Oh, somewhere in his past, I suppose. He keeps going on about that mysterious dark man. I think he is hiding from him. Or maybe he's with him. I can't really keep up. I don't worry much. Take a look around this room. You may think it looks spectacularly devastated, but I just think it's finally found its stride. <laughs> it fits perfectly with the state of this place and its... loonies. The same goes for the nonsense with Jeremy. In my eyes, we finally managed to match the wild ride inside all of us. Well, I'm happy you find the evening so harmonious. I, uh, hope you don't mind me setting things right. Jeremy's business, that is. This room looks beyond my capabilities. Good luck, detective. Hope to see you again soon. Yeah. Evening, miss. <clears throat> well, uh, we've got a lot to explore. Can I get some more of that whiskey? It was rum. Go ahead, detective. I don't think I can stomach any more anyway. The bottle said rum. Okay, so are you gonna get more? Am I bothering you? On the contrary, detective. <laughs> I enjoy watching professionals at work. <laughs> it's just standing here. Lady. Lady. Am I bothering you? Lady. Well, I better get going. Am I bothering you? Bye now, detective. Don't take any wooden nickels. Wooden nickels. Okay. Well, no more whiskey or rum for us. Staircase to the attic. One thing at a time. Or else I'm gonna get all turned around. Bread? Benet. A lagonade. Two of three. The Great Depression. Yay. Okay, that connects to this room. All right, we are unlocking doors. Huzzah. <laughs> okay, uh, before we go upstairs, I want to finish exploring at the end of this hallway, which we just unlocked. Because there are a few things here that we haven't had a chance to explore yet. And that unlocks that door. Right. Well, that's all it does. So. <clears throat> back in here. Before we go use the servant's key and the cellar key. We go up. Or actually. Maybe. Maybe we go down. Stairwell. That'll lead to the grand parlor. It's probably locked. But it does continue down to the infirmary. Or we go to the attic. Let's do the attic first. <sighs> right, so that's a crane for, like, moving... Heavy things up here, like pianos and stuff. Hello? Hello? Uh, 
Hello? No? Huh. Alright, can't even interact with that door. So we go down. That's a stretcher bed. Oh, the infirmary downstairs. All right. Oh, come on. I need the key. Sitting room and cellar. I oh, won't be able to get to the cellar that way. A syringe. That's three of three of the Great Depression. I apparently just unlocked secret knowledge. Show bonus text. Or not. There we go. Secret knowledge, a Great Depression. As the world moved... <clears throat> oh, we can play it. As the world moved into the new decade... America was spiraling into a maelstrom of debt, drought, and death. It was called the Great Depression, and ruined many families. It was a fitting name, for poverty also breeds madness through desperation. Yermi was of course no such victim, for he already witnessed the darkness within. He knew the shadow that stood on his threshold very well. It wasn't new. It was something that had always been with him. How is that forbidden knowledge? Hey. Oh. Oh. There's more of that aggressive rot. Dining room. On the common place of evil. On the common place of evil. There lies virtue and stark irreverence. Careless thoughts of luminous indifference. But blame not the beast we once were which science so often wished to refer. Not the wicked full of sin. It is you who stand and grin. All our good intentions aside, whereupon we build our pride. Sunless solitude, follow not this corrupting light. Prophets of confidence always crashes out of sight. Hear me, for we all bear this mark. Thus we must remain alone in the dark. Nora Keith, <clears throat> wasn't there a poet who was here? Uh, patient Files. Nope. Was Nora part of that group? Right.
Okay. We're connecting some dots here. Uh, before we go downstairs... Finish our tour of this big room. I think that's it. Oh, hello. Medicine box key, yay! We know where that is. Okay. That was... No. Here. Dr. Jenkins lozenges. One of several medicines prescribed to the author Cassandra Beauregard. This particular bottle contains tablets said to relieve sore throats and contain two vital vitamins. Okay, what's closer, the sitting room or the cellar? Small parlor, library, and drawing room. Grand parlor. All right, downstairs is going to lead to the boiler room. We need to get into the food and wine cellar as well. We need something in the wine cellar that will allow us to fix the boiler room. Key to the cellar. Oh, that's got to be it. Wine cellar. So that's the key we have. This is no pieces of plate. You know, Mr. Waits, I saw a piece of the plate that Liza broke. I think she's been hiding them. She's not very good at it. She just chucked it into the little room with all the tools behind the boiler. I left it there. I didn't want to embarrass her by picking it up while she was looking. We went upstairs instead and played backgammon. I let her win because she's so unhappy. The piece looked like the one on display in Cassandra's room. Hmm. You know about that one already, right? Or is your eyesight really that fuzzy? I hope you don't feel bad about your glasses. You only look stupid when you squint. <laughs> Maybe if you had more eyes, you would see these things. I wish you had all the eyes you needed. Your best and favorite guest, Grace. <clears throat> oh, that's not creepy. All right, so a bit of a broken plate back there that we need to put in Cassandra's room. Doors just open and close in this place. They just, they do that. What are you doing in my kitchen? God, I assure you. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I promise I didn't, you, uh, Mr. Hartwood is I'm nowhere near my for... kitchen, and neither should you be. Yeah. Don't make I, me I kick you out of this house. Sorry. Now get out. Yeah. That lady scared me. Yeah. Come on, lady. I just wanted to see the hanging beef. Oh, what was going on back there? All right, we got the key to the wine cellar. Yay.
Oh. The electricity bad. The electricity very bad. Right, how are we going to do this? Oh. We got to repair the circuit box. Great. Oh. Great. <laughs> that was easy enough. Oh, now it's dark. It worked. Yeah, but now it's dark. Don't put your shotgun away when it gets dark. You put it away when it's not dark. Okay, let's go turn the lights back on. Let's turn the lights back on. Oh, I can't? Oh, why? He would just, I would just flip the switch again. Why? You gotta be here in the dark. I've only got three shells. Watch me accidentally shoot some random lady who comes down here. Another shovel. No, I want the pickaxe. I'm gonna save my shotgun shells. So what, the zombie moss monsters only come out in the dark? I've got the valve! Why can't I repair the boiler? I've got the valve now. Oh, it's on this side, right. Okay, so we're looking for a chipped plate. A piece of a chipped plate. As well as whatever else they've got. Jeremy? the body. Where are those eyes? Broken plate. Okay. Were those eyes that started crawling all over him or like barnacles? Yay, three shotgun shells. It's another plate for the talisman. Like the other one, it's broken and missing some pieces. Well, it's the boiler room plate. Alright, so we're still missing a we're missing one. And one is in, one is gonna be in Cassandra's room. So that's where we're gonna find the last one. Well, time to go to the sitting room. Can we try the kitchen again? Okay, where's the sitting room? And where's Cassandra's room? 
Drawing room, Lottie's room, small parlor, water closet, mezzanine, sitting room. So it's on the stairwell, or it's on the floor above me. I can take the stairs here. Ooh, I wonder if I can, I can wedge that door open. It's a key. <sighs> oh. So end of this hallway and then take a left. There's still something in the mezzanine. It's not blue. If it's anything like Resident Evil. Okay. Purple is explored. Blue is completed. So I've, I, I forgot something in the mezzanine. Or will I have to come back there as part of the story? Because Jeremy Hartwood's room is also purple. Is there something I forgot here? Ah. She's gone now, and we find a brightness from afar. Late lag name. Ah, gonna... That's one of three, four vagabonds. All right, is it now blue? It is now blue. Okay. Stop, stop. No, I'm not done. something missing we are missing a puzzle piece is this Cassandra's room Grace's room Cassandra's room is the next one over this must be that kid's room why does she seem so familiar a small request. Don't you worry, Grace. Go play your game, bleat and bellow with the others. I won't be jealous. There will be more masquerades. However, I would love it if you would finish my mask for the feast. With love, Ruth. All right, yeah. Who gives dolls like these to a child? Who, who would do that? Like... I realize it was a different period of time, but really? Was there ever a period in time where chi- Oh. Oh, I knocked a, I knocked the head off of one. Oh, I'm so- <laughs> Was there ever a period in time where this was seen as a cute, fun plaything? Just every doll is creepy and awful, especially the one with oversized heads. Oh, man. Ah, a jack-in-the-box, working exactly as intended. Brandon Beltfed says, another fantastic episode, Ox. Drink on, sir! I mean, I mean, play, play on, sir! I shall play on and drink on. I think we're all in good company today. Let's try that again. Oh, we can pick it up. It's a leg nape. Leg, leg nap. We finish that, we get forbidden knowledge. That was Rorschach and jack-in-the-box. Okay, Cassandra's room.
Tell me you see the kid. She's, there's, don't start smoking, there's a kid in the room. You can't smoke in a room with a kid. There you go. The power of nearby childhood prevents the lighter from working. <laughs> what you got there? You drawing something? No. Nothing special. I'm just bored. Oh, he's like, he likes I know you from somewhere. I remember you, Mr. Conby. From where? Don't touch that. Cassandra wouldn't like it. She wouldn't like it at all. Do you know where she is? I'd rather not talk about it. It makes me upset. Besides, she'll be back after the Feast of St. John. You think? Yep. It's all on the page, Mr. Conby. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna go now, if that's okay. I don't like to stay too long in the same place. Mr. McCoffee might find me. Hey. Is he mean to you? Not everyone needs to be saved, Mr. Conby. You should know that by now. Oh, suddenly that got really uncomfortable. <laughs> she starts quoting scripture and he's like, all right. <laughs> so this is where Cassandra Beauregard ended up. For some reason, I thought she died years ago. There's more of that rot again. Like it's guiding me to do something. But what? Put it on the medicine. If right? I find the full set of bottles, then maybe I can make something out of the stains of rot. Okay. Uh, so I don't it's think I have everything I need. I need to find another bottle. Oh. Margrave Liniment. One of several medicines prescribed to the author Cassandra Beauregard. This particular bottle contains an ointment for pain relief sold as the fourth version of the company's popular recipe. There we go. Rot made the shape of a snake. There must be something important to find here. Maybe it has something to do with the numbers on the labels. Two, five, seven. Two, five, seven. For the combination, your medicine. Miss Beauregard, I picked up your medicine at the post office today. As you understand, it needs to be administered by the orderlies for your safety. I have put the box in Lottie's room for now, and I'm sure she will find you as soon as possible. Mr. Waits. It's another one of those strange padlocks. 
Oh crap, not this again. <laughs> Oh, no, not this again. 257. Okay, so Pisces. 3, 4, 5. Gemini. 6, 7. Leo. Pisces, Gemini, Leo. Okay, so it's two half circles, the Roman numeral for two, and a sperm cell. Broken plate. We got it. Yeah. Colonel 87th says, ASMR poem hell. Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> Tony J says, Ox has weird math. I just, I just don't know astrology, so I, I don't know what the shapes mean. Constellations, I guess. Okay. Well, now I need to get back to the cellar. Yeah. Oh, that is gross. Oh, there's a scum on the surface. Who leaves that? Just it's, it's an active bathroom. Look, there's lights on and everything, and they just leave this. Gross. This place needs to be condemned. There's no salvaging it. Right. Well, we solve a puzzle only to unlock another one. We also have to find this puzzle piece. Well, let's go back to the cellar. I can remember how. Gotta go down, right? Is huffing and puffing. So I'm used to all this exercise. Oh wait, we missed the boiler room. Oh, 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 it's the electricity's back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. It was one of these up here. Was it? There it is. Okay. Puzzle time. Okay, so it's a picture of a sun shining on a farm village below. So we've got clouds in the sky, the sun rays, the farm below.
Oh. Find the talisman hiding under the boiler. Oh, we got a number. Oh. Seven, five, Nine. Alright, seven. Five. Nine. Is that not it? Nine, seven, five. Seven. Oh, it's five seven nine. Five seven nine. Five seven nine. Black glass is showing another room. Must be a way to another one of Jeremy's memories. Boiler room and a wine rack. Did the door just open? I think the door just opened. So we gotta go in the wine cellar. The layout's different. The layout is different. What? No, I can't go up the stairs. Okay, uh... Oh, crap. <laughs> too good at this. Right. Well, we've got about 10 minutes left in the broadcast. We'll see exactly how far we can get in 10 minutes. Don't need to worry about stealth. You can crouch if you want to. You can leave those standing behind. If your crouch don't work, then you're dead because you fell that stuff all day. You can crouch. You can crouch. Everybody's doing the crouch. Oh, ho, ho. Okay, I don't really see anything. Maybe I can risk a run? Means there's something nearby. Ooh, okay. Creepy crypt. 
And a passageway that way. Yeah, let's go into the creepy crypt. Heartwood. The Heartwood's family crypt. Emily's family must have deeper roots in New Orleans than I thought. I figured she was a Yankee like me. great. Love that. Love that splatter effect. Just splattering on thin air. Okay. Well, they gave us this little distraction thing for a reason. Too bad I can't move very fast while holding it. Let's get up here and throw it somewhere. It's so dark. Can't see. Oh, there's a chest over there. <sighs> Gotta get the loot. Gotta open the chest. Shotgun shells, all right. It's so dark, oh my God, I can't see a thing. Oh, 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 oh. Of course, they spawn behind me. Horror game trope. Completely explore it area and then have monsters spawn behind you. Fine. Okay, it looks like a puzzle coming up. Hmm. The Blessing, a key item. A rustic plate adorned with lost allegory. What's this? I wonder if it goes there in that circular recession. Hmm. A circular recession during the Great Depression. <laughs> Now what do we got here? Got it. Difficult. That was that was a tricky one, man. What is that? A sledgehammer? Yeah. I'm gonna sledgehammer things. Why sledgehammer when you have bullet? Uh. Oh, <laughs> it just broke right out of there. Sketch this chapel in his book, so it must be important. Looks like I'll need more medallions to open it, though. There's the one medallion. 
I don't think I have everything I need. Looks like we go scavenging. Scavenging for medallions. Candles are lit. Why are the candles lit outside? Does it not rain here? Never mind. Never mind. It's just a dreamland. It's not real. Sniper rifle. Why can't I have a sniper rifle? Yay. It's gonna spawn right behind me, won't it? I saw two. The last thing I want is two. What's that? Oh. in the booze. Come on, come and get me. Where'd you go? Two rounds left. This is why they want us to use stealth. Because I'm running low on ammo. Okay, thank you, game. I will, oh, here we go. So are we gonna try and just sneak by him? Loot, 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 loot. Oh no, that's what I left behind. Wasting valuable time. It's gonna finish its lap soon. Oh, it's hobbling faster than I'm walking and crouching. Hubble, hubble, hubble. Faster! Yeah! Yeah. 
No! Nothing. Fine. Screw you, I didn't want to play with you anyway. <sighs> oh. Alright, well I just did a save. And I'm over time, ladies and gents. I need to end the broadcast. Don't think I have time to finish this. But I will loot it. I will loot. I've always got time to loot. Okay. Probably big boss in there, which I will save for another day. Sebastian Sanchez says, No! Please keep going, Ox. I'm sorry. I am. But that's the end for me. I got to call it. Got to get some sleep as I have work to do tomorrow. Thank you for joining me, everybody. Really appreciate each and every one of you who tunes into Scotch and Smoke Rings each and every day. I'll be back next week. Same Ox time, same Ox channel for more Alone in the Dark as well as the hour-long Q&A at the very beginning. Uh, next week's live streams, Monday and Wednesday. Not sure what I'll be playing on those days, but I will definitely be playing something fun. And uh, this weekend, no lore video as I'm still gathering footage for the continuation of my full story of Fallout 4. So I'll try to get some shorts out this weekend, though, to tide you guys in. Thanks a bunch. Have a wonderful rest of your Thursday, and I'll see you soon with more lore videos and more live streams. Bye-bye now.